Have you ever wanted to be able to use your Power Apps without internet access? That's right, it's called offline. And so we've always been able to do it with this weird save data, load data shenanigan dance. But just recently, Microsoft has released a new feature where we can take Dataverse offline and it's like three clicks and it, boom, it just works. Um, it's pretty amazing. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna walk you through a working copy of one of those and then we're gonna build one from scratch and it's gonna literally take us like five minutes to build an offline app. It is insane. And of course, we'll explain all the little things you need to know along the way. Sound fun? Now let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. And let's just start here on my phone so you can see what this looks like in action, right? So here I've got the offline five app because you can tell I've done a lot of practice here. We're gonna open up the Power App. And so the first time you load it, you'll see that it takes an extra second or two to set it up. That's because it's putting a bunch of infrastructure underneath the hood. It's using a version of SQLite actually to kind of handle all the changes. But here you can see I've got an app, I've got a gallery, a form. And so here if we click on this top record for Buddy, and then let's just press edit, scroll down here, and let's add a picture, right? Take a photo. And so Buddy has disappeared, so we'll just use the Buddy toy on my desk, and we will take that and we'll say use the photo. And I did photos on purpose because I found that file management was an important thing in most offline apps I built, so I want to make sure that it worked. So we, you know, we added kind of all the pieces. Here we'll also change the name to Buddy Young 2 just to make sure all of our changes go through. Okay, and so then what we'll do, yep, that looks good, is we will say done and we will hit the save button. Now what's really cool about this is faster than you could even see, it went ahead and saved the data. It first saves the data locally and then it replicates it up to the Dataverse instance, right? But we wanna see that happen. So what we're gonna do now is now that we've seen that it does work just straight up, let's just go ahead and take the phone offline. So we're gonna scroll down here, we'll put it in airplane mode. I know you all do that when you're on airplanes like you're supposed to. And so notice the little symbol on top right, it knows it's offline, there's a little no internet at the bottom. We'll get rid of both of those. Let's add a new record. And so we'll put my stuff in there real quick. So there's my name, address can be one, two, three, job ID can be 9999, great, start time, 1215, okay. End time, I don't know, a week later, 22nd, who cares, service type, installation, photo, let's take another photo. Quick tap to add, take another one, and we'll spin the camera around and cheese. God, that's terrifying. We'll say use photo anyway. And now we will say save. Now, I want you to pay attention before I hit the save thing here because what's really nice about this because it's always saving locally, it happens really fast. So we save, and just like that, the user is back to their experience. They did not have to wait on the file to upload or to get cached or anything. Like, boom, it was basically over. Now, if you look in the top right, notice the little globe has an up arrow. So if we click on the globe, this is the most helpful screen in my early development because it gives me an insight, right? Look, it's ready with pending uploads. It's got two rows to go. There are three tables that have been pulled down. Uh, here's how much local storage is currently being used. Like I have a lot of insight of what's going on. Now, if we do check for updates, nothing's gonna happen because we're still offline. But let's say that we land from our flight, right? Woo, plane's over, so we close that. Look, just as fast as we can do it, look, it goes to connected, it is uploading data, bingo, bingo, it is ready. So I didn't do anything, right? I didn't have to add logic to check for the internet. I, you're gonna see this, we're gonna build all this ourselves in a minute, but I didn't do anything. I just came back online and it took advantage of my data, right? And now, of course, I mean, nothing changes here because the user experience has been using the cached version the whole time, but if there had been any internet updates, they would have gotten sync back down, so then my app would have updated with those as well. But there you go. This is a fully functional offline inspection app. Now you're saying, Shane, we've done this before with save data and load data. We have to a point, but wait until you see, right? We're gonna switch over to my desktop now and we're gonna build this thing in just a matter of moments from end to end and we're gonna be like, what? I know. Also, if you want to download this app or the one we're about to build, right? I'm gonna put all this into a nice little solution for us. Uh, remember that you can always sign up at training.powerapps911.com to my YouTube library. You can download this app and all the other apps I've ever built to share with people. And so you have access to those. You can join office hours, ask me questions live once a month. Office hours is actually this week on Wednesday. So, or Thursday, Thursday. So if you sign up this week, you can join office hours on Thursday. How fun would that be? Okay, anyway, back over to my desktop. So here we go, right? We're gonna jump into my solution. So this is the one that you just saw me demo. I built all this in a solution to make it more portable so you guys can get it, right? But what we're gonna do is we wanna just, we're gonna build the whole thing, right? So we're gonna start from the beginning. So we'll say new app, and we're gonna do a Canvas app. We're gonna call this offline video, and we're gonna set it to a phone form factor, right? I'm gonna say create. Okay, now we got our blank app over here, 
And so we're going to, the uh, first thing I want to do here is I need to create myself a table. So I'm going to go here to uh, add data and then we're going to say create a new table. And we're going to use Copilot to do it because let's face it, I'm too lazy to build my own tables. So we're going to ask it, please create me a table for a field service management app that I will use offline. Set the table name to field service six, please. <laughs> and then we'll hit go. All right, this has nothing to do with Copilot, just when I'm building demo apps now or Dataverse tables, I want to quickly, I find that Copilot does a great job of giving me a structure, it gives me some sample rows, and I am boom, boom, up to work. Also keep in mind, as we're working through this solution, and we'll talk about this more later, but this only works for Dataverse, okay? So we're just gonna take this thing the way it came, I don't wanna mess with it at all, we're gonna say save and close. After I show you how fast we can build this, at the end we'll kind of come back and talk about some of the little nuggets you might wanna know. But you can see this is added into my app. And now that it's added into my app, we're gonna set the app to go offline, right? So you can go up here to settings. And so there's two things we're looking for here, right? The first one is can be used offline, right? And it's a good reminder, Dataverse only. I just said that, but I want you to remember that. So you set this to on. And then there are these offline profiles. And so we're gonna use auto-generated. Maybe in a later video, we'll talk about more advanced stuff that you can do with profiles. But the idea of profiles is you can actually build those to say, hey, instead of, downloading the whole Dataverse structure, let's only download these specific fields or these specific records. Like you can kind of shape the amount of data that's going across with profiles. But that is outside what we want to do today. So right now we're just going to rock with auto-generated and we're going to close this. Now when we did that, it automatically created us a screen, right? If we go over here, so it created screen two, which is a offline templated, 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 temple, I don't know what that word is, templated screen that basically it's just kind of built to be responsive already and it's got the offline capabilities built into it. You don't have to use this one, but for this first one you probably want to. So I'm just going to delete screen one when I was testing early, I'd forget this and then get angry at myself. So delete screen one, so boom, we got our screen two. In screen two now, I'm going to click into this main container and I'm going to insert myself a gallery. I'm going to hook it up to field service six and there are those records that they brought in. Now, one of the things that you want to know about your galleries here is that there is a weird deal where like the default sort on your browser and the normal power apps is a little bit different than the default sort in uh, offline gallery apps. I don't know why, but so that is one of those weird things. So what's easiest to do is just give it some type of order that you want to sort these by. So that way they both sort the same. If you, if you don't, it's confusing, right? So let's just set this to sort by columns, field service six, job ID, right? It's just one of the random fields. We don't care. We just want it to, we want it to be in the same order in both places. And so sorting by something will make that happen, okay? So that was step one. Step two, what we're going to do here is we're going to insert ourselves a form. So an edit form here. Make sure you're still inside your gallery, right? It should go underneath here, or not inside your gallery, inside your container. Let's hook that up to field service six. And then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to change its item property to be gallery1.selected, right? So whatever record up here is down here. And then I know in the demo app, right, it's got all those fancy buttons and that fancy container. We're not doing any of the fancy. We just want this to work. So all I'm going to do here is just go in and insert myself another button. And we're going to say, hey, you are responsible for submitting the form, form two. And, you know, maybe we'll put it, you know, we'll change the words to say save. And then we'll set it to centered. But that's all we're going to do, right? So once again, if you want to add more, make this look different. And this doesn't have to use forms. We're just trying to do this as fast as possible, but you could use individual controls and patches, probably what I would do with all my customer apps. But once again, we just want to see this thing go just like that. Oh, speaking of things, we also want to see, we want an image column. So we'll just go back over here to our data real quick, field service six, we will edit the data. And files and stuff, like I said, it's almost always in the equation. So I want you to test with those if you're going to have those in your real solution. And so here we'll just call this photo. And then we'll change the data type to uh, file and then image and then make that the primary image and say save. Once it finishes saving, it should jump us back over to our power app with the refresh table. Oh, so that brings us back to here. So now if we hit X here, now we get our refreshing of our table. And now that that's all good, we should be in business. We'll go up here and we're gonna change this image and just right once again, these are mistakes I made when I was testing. But by making sure that it's there, that way, when we add an image, we'll see it. If you leave it on a sample image, you won't see it. And you'll be like, why doesn't it work? Because you forgot to change it. It happens. Shh. Believe it or not, that's it, right? Like, we now have a fully functional offline <laughs> app. How easy was that? So let's just hit save. And then, of course, publish it. Publish this version. And so now that it's published, if we want, we can jump back over to my phone, which is 
oh, such a pain, but we're going to do anyway, because I like you guys and I want you to see your working app. So let's do that. All right, let's switch our search up here and let's search for offline video. All right, and there is our app. Now I want, I'm gonna not fast forward through all this because I want you to kind of see all the things that are happening here. Also, if you notice it's a little grainy, it's because when I record my phone this way where I don't have internet access, because we need to do that in the test, that causes a graininess. So anyway, so we're gonna say offline video, we're gonna click on that. Now when you do this, you're gonna see it's installing the app on your device, it's downloading data, downloading application data, and then it finally says the app we can use on internet connection. So keep that in mind, right? Like you have to kind of give it the initial setup, right? You need to be online to set it up. And one of the times I published it and I tried to open it here like half a second later and it kind of had an error because it, I went too fast, right? So always try to like wait like 30 seconds, a minute after you publish before you come here. But anyway, now that we're good. And then, so the first thing you wanna do is just make sure that your app works if you are online, right? So we'll just go down here to John Smith and we'll say John Smith 2. And then we will, oh, we forgot to add the image. Ah! All right, well, let's just test it, right? So we'll say save. And so it's patching locally. It should be pushing up to the internet. And now it's saved. Now, so we wanna fix it, right? So what we gotta do, we gotta jump back over here to my computer real quick. And so here, what do we need to do? We need to edit our form. So we're gonna click on our form and then we're gonna say edit fields, add field. And then down here we got photo. What's really sad is that I made the same mistake in practice. <laughs> That's all right. I guess it's just the natural flow thing. So there you go, we're gonna add the photo field. Right now it should be at the bottom of my form. There it is. And so then now we're going to save and publish again. All right, so publish this version. And so then now if we switch back to my phone, and so on my phone, we'll just get out of the app. We'll kind of pull down and cause a refresh here. And then we'll click on the app again. And you should see, there you go, new versions available, tap to update now. And then here you go, now it says, hey, it can be used without connection. So let's just take um, Mary Johnson here. We'll change her to Mary Johnson 3. And then we will this time try to do our photo. All right, we'll take a photo of the buddy toy again. Like so, I hope you can kind of see me recording in the background, that's hilarious. So we'll say use photo and we will say save here again. Well, there you go, you can kind of see the sync happening. Oh, faster than I could click on there, it already did it. And if we switch to my uh, computer again, right over here, now you might notice where we don't see the photos right away. Well, what do you have to do, right? We need to go over here to data sources and we will just say refresh here. And then if all of the stuff is truly sunk, look, there is Mary Johnson's photo. There's John Smith too, right? So we can see that the data is getting there. Okay, one more test on the phone. And so what is that? We want to go here now, let's take this one offline, right? Do, 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 do. Click on the airplane mode, there we go. And so, right, we didn't have to tell the app, we just went offline, no big deal. We'll click on Sarah Davis here, which is funny, I know someone named Sarah Davis. This is this random data copilot made up. I'll get rid of the no internet. So we'll say Sarah Davis five, and then we will add another picture. We'll take a photo. This time we'll take a picture of the buddy sticker and my chapstick, very important stuff. There we go. Use the photo. Once again, notice the app comes back uh, very quickly. We can hit save. Like We're not waiting. We see it up here in the gallery, right? I, once again, I know it's a little grainy, but uh, we see it there. But our icon still in that state of, hey, ready with pending uploads. And so what do we need to do? Like, and so now we will go online, right? So turn off airplane mode. And as fast as I switch back over, you can see that it is all sync back together, right? So look at that. We built ourselves a fully functional offline app. Five minutes, I don't know, with all my extra talking, maybe six minutes, uh, pretty darn quick. So very cool stuff here. Now, let's switch back over to my Power App and let's talk about a couple of the things I want you to know. So the first one is just a reminder, this only works with Dataverse today, right? So it doesn't work with SharePoint, doesn't work with your Power, uh, Power Automate flows or SQL or anything else. It's just gonna be with Dataverse. So it's only gonna work in those scenarios. Um, now this button up here, so this was added. This is technically something you could rebuild yourself. So with this little critter here, notice we on select, it does a show host info, host info online sync. So if you wanna make your own button, you could just copy that and that's what would run and show. Now, none of this offline stuff works on your PC. So if I press the button now, it's not going to work in authoring mode and it's not going to work if I was trying to run this app in a browser, right? So it's only gonna work on your mobile clients. The other thing to note here, like the icon kept changing color. So that it's not something special. 
right? So if you go here to the icon and go to icon, so what they're doing is they're just showing different globe icons based on the different statuses. You can reverse engineer this and you're like, hey, how do I know they're connected and they have pending up syncs, right? So look, connection sync dot connected pending up sync. So you could use this, right? This is great documentation for me if I want to build my own functionality. Maybe I want to have a warning message that pops up whenever they're offline, right? Then I can do that. Or if I get sync errors, I want to do a notify. I can action on all those things because I can always just be checking this connection sync dot whatever, right? So this is a great little treasure trove of things, right? And this is typical of Microsoft, right? They gave us something really cool and we all just assume this thing was magic. It's not, it's a power app. It's just an icon. It just has some special properties that they're taking advantage of. Now, speaking of my Dataverse tables, let's jump over to the table real quick. So we'll go here, we'll say edit data, and then we'll say edit table properties. And so here, if you go to advanced options, so when you're looking at a table, there's two things that you're looking for if you're having trouble with existing tables not wanting to be offline, right? So this track changes needs to be on. And so for example, like this track changes doesn't work with virtual tables. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll work around this SharePoint problem with virtual table, no, you can't track changes on a virtual table. So this needs to be turned on first, and then down here can be taking offline is checked, okay? So when you create a new Dataverse table today, both of those things happen for me automatically. I didn't have to do it, but if you're trying to use existing tables, you're gonna come in here and make sure that this is on, and then you'll be able to check this on. Um, if you can't check this on, right, it's typically, like I said, Virtual tables seem to be the number one thing that people are already struggling with. Like, they want to do a virtual table. Well, you can't. Oh, one more hot tip. So over here in the solution, right, before I export this so all of you can take it, one of the things I need to do is I'm going to go here to my app, right, so offline video, and I'm going to go to advanced and then add required objects. This is going to look for anything that is missing that would be needed. And so if we say, okay, here, you're going to see that after a second, it added the profile, right? And so the other app that I was talking to you about, the offline five, I need to do the same thing for it. So make sure that you go through and do this. I would do it for all the things. So I do it for the two tables. I know that I don't need it, but you might. But so now that the profile is also in the solution. So when you export it, they will have the profile. If you don't, they'll be without a profile and it won't work. So there you go. Quick little tip. I just remembered as I was finishing the recording. So anyway. Back to where you were. Also things like when is it checked for updates? That happens every 10 minutes. That is something that's configured in profiles, right? Might be more adjustable in the future. We're not worried about today, but auto checking for updates is happening every 10 minutes. When you have updates, obviously they're going on the fly. If you're pulling from multiple uh, tables, remember you can use views instead of lookups, right? Because the lookup function would you know be less performant than just putting the stuff in with views. There's a lot of you know nuance that we're gonna learn about is offline apps over the next you know few weeks and months. But man, what a giant step forward, right? Kudos to the team. I think they're over in France is the team that built this. I've been working with them a little bit. Um, and they are just doing awesome stuff here. They got a lot more ideas. They want to add more features. Everything you're thinking, man, I really wish it did X. They're probably thinking the same thing too, but they can only build so much so fast. So look for this feature to continue to improve. But for those of you that are building offline apps today, this is a real game changer. I hope you take advantage of. The last little caveat I'll throw in there is that because it's all in Dataverse, it does make the app premium. That should not be a surprise to anyone, but you know, I am here for reminding you of that. So now you can go offline with Dataverse and be data attached, detached, data attached. Eh, eh, eh. I tried. I'm uh, not on a comedy role, right? What do you do? All right. Questions, comments, any of that, leave me them below. Always happy to answer them. I'm sure you've got plenty. I will try to answer them or I'll try to get help to answer them if you're asking things I don't know the answer to yet. Uh, I will definitely work on that. You know, remember, go to training.powerapps901.com, sign up for the YouTube library. You could download this app that we just built and the prettier version that I demoed earlier. So if you want to kind of jumpstart. And also we did this as simplified as possible, but you could build a multi-screen, multi-patch, multi-control. Like you can do all the shenanigans you want, but I just want to get you that core, how easy the core concept was, because that's the first one you should build, no matter what your vision is, right? Build one of those, test it, play with it, get comfortable, then do really cool things. All right, with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.